no, I'll project. Thank you so much, um, Clinton. <laughs> Amanda, my book here, what I have written inside <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really learned a lot. So I've known Amanda since 2016, if I'm right, yes, from the gas crew. Gas is gifted and spirited crew. So those who are thinking LPG gas or something else, <laughs> it's gifted and spirited crew. And big ups to um, Kwejo Awote, wherever he is. That man has um, taught us a lot. And it was amazing listening to you, Amanda. Like all the things you were brooding on, I was like, Shh, I'm blessed to be here. <laughs> okay, so um, we are going to quickly go through memorization first. Okay, so Amanda has taken us through writing, 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 and all that. But sometimes after writing, if you are into stage um, ministrations, just like our rhymes, Dexes, and Kemeto came to do here, you'll be thinking, what next? How, how do I get through all of that? So we say a prayer. Father, we thank you for your presence in our midst today. We pray that you will take absolute control and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So the art of poetry, we are going through memorization. Next slide. So after um, writing a very long piece, sometimes you get triggered or inspired by the Holy Spirit to write a lot. Sometimes two pages, three pages. Yeah, people write five pages. I don't know if anyone knows um, this guy, Chris Webb. Chris Webb. Chris Webb, I watched his ministration and the guy was speaking for 10 minutes. And I'm like, wait, oh. <laughs> 10 minutes. We are talking about close to 10 pages. If even he uses a minute for one page. And he speaks very fast. So that would be like two pages per minute. And he was speaking for 10 minutes. He didn't miss a line. He didn't go like a eh. Um, nothing. And you're like, how did he get all that in here? There were no stage monitors or those things that the journalists use and they, they'll be reading. Um, today, this is happening here in Accra. I'm here to present and they are reading from the screen. No, everything is in there. So after writing all your pieces and all that, if you are into stage work, you, you'll be thinking, how do I memorize all that? Please, who has asked um, themselves this question before? <laughs> I'm sure it's, it's part of the reason some people, they fear the stage. They come and say, hey, what if I forget? I have an experience. Most people know. You'll get to that. <laughs> In due time, I'll, I'll tell you about that experience. Okay, so let's move on. So why memorize? When you think about all the pages you want to memorize, you go like, let me have written the thing. Why should I be the one to spend time and memorize again? I've done my part, at least. Then you start thinking, hey, someone cry has not been able to write, but me, I've been able to write. Why should I memorize? Then you're saying all those things. So you memorize because you want to be able to speak your lines fluently without really thinking about them. When I say we should recite A, B, C, D, it will be so easy. So you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, or someone will get some places wrong. <laughs> but most of us can recite A, B, C, D. And we do that without even thinking about it. Who says A and the person is thinking, hey, what is after A? What is after B? What is after C? It is something that has, that has been captured in your subconscious mind. So you don't even think about it. You just start... When you are sleeping and someone hits you, A, B, C, D, say, A, B, C, D, E, F, you can say it to the end. Maybe two times you might not be able to. <laughs> but A, B, C, D, D, most of us can. So you want to, to, you want to be able to communicate without really thinking about what is next, what is next. When you think about those things, it puts some tension on you, such that the moment you start to add some emotions or some um, forms of communication to what you are saying, then you forget all the lines. Has this happened to you before? Like, you know the lines, so 
Um, okay, there is something here that I want to read. It says, established course outline for the poetry class, the wedding project. So you start, it is in your head. Established course outline for the wedding projects. But the moment you add emotions to it, or you want to add some form of communication to it, established course outline. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, <laughs> and that is what most of us will do. You are ministering on stage, you are in church, and say, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> Brethren. <laughs> but most of us, we have our way. We get our way through it because we are Christians and we know the scriptures. And so we know we are talking about love. Today, no, brethren, for God so loved the world, <laughs> then you channel it somewhere else. But we want to be able to have everything that we are going to say in our mind, such that no matter the emotions we add to, then we don't forget. Because when you are on stage and you are probably acting, you are not doing poetry, but you are part of a stage play and all that. You can't say, because I'm supposed to be angry, immediately you get angry, you forget everything <laughs> you have to say. No. So how we are going to go through how we can do that. And then memorizing gives you a connection with your audience. Supposing I was doing this presentation, and then when I say one thing, I'm there thinking about the next thing. Like, you're going to lose interest. Like, what is this guy doing? So, um, let me, for lack of a better word, you'll be um, a mind stammerer or a mind stutterer. You are not stammering in speech, but you are stammering in thinking or in recollecting whatever you have to say. So you are not saying, um, tu, 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 but you are doing it in your mind. You are thinking, hey, then it's show, then it's show, then it's show. It's like when you don't go for a hair house and you are probably part of the choir, and then that song you are doing, no conductor, the choir, conk. Charlie, the way you chew granuts, when I say chew granuts, I'm like, so <laughs> that's, that's where you, you hear people think, I will worship the Lord. <laughs> then the rest of the choir is singing, and they are doing something, but you wouldn't notice that this is what the person is doing, because there is no sound coming out. So, he is my peace. And then the word is, is it when trouble rose or something. And the second one is when sorrow leaves. So you hear them, he is my peace when sorrow leaves. Because a person is coming to say trouble and then you hear that it's supposed to be sorrow. So you hear, when sorrow leaves. <laughs> okay, so as a poet, you should be able to capture all your lines. Let's move on. All your lines. Okay, so what I'm coming to present to you, they are not rules. They are actually guidelines because there are no rules to memorizing something. There are no rules to, like, let me be, let me calm down. To Babadier, said this is the rule. Hey, what is the Baba? What is the Baba? Make sure we are, Charlie, but baby, you want me to. No, not that. These are guidelines. Amen. And I pray that as we go through this, we'll be able to. Um, get an inch closer to good memorization. Okay, so first of all, understand the content. You can't really memorize something you don't understand. Okay, some people write their own poems and they don't even understand what they've written. <laughs> it's like, when they put the words together, on what does Naveka Please understand what you write. Okay, she has said a lot about writing. Be coherent, like you are establishing a thought. Don't lose the reader, maybe along the way you are saying something before you realize, like, just too funny. You start writing, and like, today, when I was looking at the light, and then the pistol entered the mortar, and then Banku came out. So as I was saying the Banku to my mouth, uh, I drank the tea. And the thing was going into my belly. Uh, then I had the call. Then I sat in the trotro. I was on my way. Uh, then I saw the two of you see, 
it doesn't, it's not coherent. But if you had picked maybe one plot and then you were digesting it or you were exhausting it, you would have found something very tangible. Okay, so when you are writing, make sure you are coherent. It makes your memorization also a smooth one. It is one of the difficult things to memorize is wordplay because that one, although it is establishing a complete thought or something, you have rhymes in there, you are using lots of poetic elements. Most of the poetry slams you go to, which might not necessarily be Christian, it is wordplay. Okay, so maybe, Kate, can you meet me at the gate? That, that one, when you lose one rhyme, the end. <laughs> or when you're talking now, nah, then someone taps you. Charlie, increase the volume. It will be like, man, we're starting again. Yeah. <laughs> because when you are tapped, everything goes away. But as much as you can, understand whatever you have written down. Amen. Sometimes, um, I think I was mentoring one guy. He told me, oh, I want to start writing. I was like, oh, how do, you, how do I start? Like, Just write anything and bring it to me, Charlie. I should have told the person, oh, let me give you a topic. Okay. <laughs> God, when a person wrote it, I, I was reading. Uh, uh, hello, please. What, what have you written? <laughs> I, I, I wanted to understand. Like, I asked it genuinely. I wanted to understand. I wasn't getting... The meaning wasn't really coming out. Okay, so before you memorize, understand what you've written. And then break your poem or word piece into um, verses or categorize them. You see someone writes a poem and the person writes it like an article or like thesis dissertation. Most of us have done projects before or we've worked on projects before. So we know how we write literature review and all that. You are writing a poem that you are going to minister. You are going to memorize. And you have written the thing like literature review. When you start justify, no space, a basa, and you want to memorize the thing. How are you going to memorize it? You break the poem into verses. Amen. And then each verse is carrying a particular thought. That is if the poem is long, especially for spoken word poets. You break them into verses, so you know this verse is tackling this from here. I am moving there from this. I am moving there. It makes memorizing easier, or let me say, a bit easier. When I say easier, it will be like I'm downplaying memorization. I know how it is, so I won't downplay it at all. And I can't say, oh, as for me, I've memorized that. So now, and then me huafa. Charlie, every piece be here in this memorizing strength. <laughs> Amen. So you. Do your best to segment your piece. The next one is write the poem again from memory. This is something that has really helped lots of folks. So you've memorized the thing. But you want to test your memorizing ability. You want to know, do I have everything? Have I captured everything? So you can pick your book again. And whatever is in your mind, you write it again. And afterwards, you compare with what you have. And see how best you, you fare. Amen. So it gives you the time to recollect whatever is in your memory when you are writing. Because something that you have seen, when your hand accompanies it in writing, it also adds um, something to the brain. It makes the brain also capture it. The brain remembers that the eyes have seen it. The hand has also written it in a way. Amen. And also record the poem and replay to yourself over and over. This is also something that has really helped lots of folks. So people record their poems and they insert their earpieces. And most of the times, they look on what they have. And they add all their poetic elements. This is how I'm going to say it when I get here. This is how I'm going to say it when I get to this verse. And afterwards, they listen to it over and over again. So when you do that, it helps you in um, get stuck into your mind. How many of as I've learned some lines from movies that we never took the time to really say, I'm going to learn these lines. But because you, li you listened to them or you watched the movies and you were hearing them over and over again, before you realize, you start speaking like them. Especially when we were kids. Adverts. Adverts. God, 
me do for pa. Mm, I will say it with them. In fear be brave, I'm sure we only me shall mother. Oh, yeah, no, my be brave, mommy. Mm, oh, your boy for pa. Every, every word, every word, every sound I knew because I was always watching the thing. Yeah, yeah, not the end of your room, so now, but sunlight. Mm, and, 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 and. It was when I grew up that I realized it was fresh as the morning or something. <laughs> How many of you knew? Please, sincerely, how many of you knew? Sunlight. But we all know the rhythm and know that because we've been listening to it over and over again. Go to a time, you even knew Hello FM Otek. What did they do? Otek 102.5. Fox, Fox. Oh my God, what's my station? Facts. One of all points, right? We do all these things because we were constantly listening to them. And someone can also come and stand here. Eh, it's here for prayer. More at all. Or maybe now my hold on to man. Yes, sir. Can you dear brother? More song for Kwabena Adjumai. And now make us say, "Cause your boy and now." Oh, tech 102.5. So I will come and say, "Oba said to me, Etienne was sweet spirit. Ah, I will break home." Yeah, could you have from crap to your best number? Because you've been listening to it over and over again. And to all start to say, oh, can You don't even think about it. Like the food now, I'm on my ear, you see. Who says hey, they get time? Say, I'm going to learn after me, who's seeing the media, you're not seeing a That everything is there. She's been saying it over and over again. And to all things, somebody, and if, bye, yeah. Eh, maybe, oh, half, I saw family, wah. I yes, a star, my sister, my now in the tone to so jump. I say, why didn't you now? No, 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 Okay, amen. So when you record the thing and you play it to yourself over and over again, before you realize you can say it without even looking at it. Someone wrote a piece for me. That was the first um, spoken word piece I ministered on campus in 2013 at um, the CCB Auditorium. It was drama praise. And then it was four pages. I was like, ah, you first, you have discovered someone who wants to give a piece to the person, four pages. And then I was to learn it during the long vac. Charlie, my first time. Yakasha me said the event is at CCB. <laughs> I wasn't sleeping, Charlie. I'll wake up. I'll say the thing. Everything, everything. I wouldn't miss a word. Such so that when I even wake up and you say you start from the middle, I can continue. I came back to campus and I realized it was actually going to be a duet. I said, ah, and all <laughs> So whilst my partner is even speaking. I know where she has gotten to. I know wherever direction we are moving to. Because I had listened to myself over and over again. In a space of four months. Four months. Ah, the four pages, everything was here. And even now, I have um, remnants of that piece in there. There's a part that really ministered to me. So I still have it there. He wrote something like, um, there is a place in God, no matter how much far you've gone in God. He said, there is a place in God never ventured. Um, a height never reached, a depth never breached, a distance never exceeded. All these things were so they're talking about amphitheaters and all that. So something you listen to over and over again, it becomes very difficult to lose it from your memory. Amen. The next one is visualization or imagery. Whatever you are going to present, eh, have a visual representation of it. How do I want to communicate it? Or when I, when I am speaking, what, what do I want the people to visualize? You are probably um, talking about saying you were in sin and then grace found you or something. You should have a visual representation of sin. Okay? But when you come, stand there as a poet, and then immediately you start, you are thinking of, Yes, one said, I'm I was. I'm a bad boy. Grace, now, I wasn't really that. Charlie, no matter who you are, it was the same grace. Whether you were a medra or whether you were brought up in the church, it is the same grace. So you immerse yourself into that 
point, get to that point where you lose yourself. I lose myself from Felix. I've been saved. I can preach for one hour. I can stand before people and speak no. And I get to that place where, who am I? Like, I remember when I was there and I thought there was no rescue and it was just me and all the things that I was facing. If not for grace, Charlie, if grace is an ocean, like the singer and songwriter said, then I'm sinking. If not for God's grace, like... Who am I? A wretched someone like me. It makes you enter the character of sin. Like, Charlie, look at me. Like, speaking right now, I feel that I didn't deserve this love. Someone looks at me. I am wallowing in the mud. And the person, the person still says, I want that person in the mud. The person doesn't say that. Pick him up from the mud and clean him up and now he can belong to me no he comes to me in the mud and then he enters the mud to bring me out not caring about his royal clothes so you 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 picture all these things and then you get deeper into the character it makes recollecting the thing easier so you get there you know the first verse i'm going to talk about sin how deep i was in sin you are visualized where you are some deep places where you are and it makes recollecting the thing easier. Easier than... It hasn't been spoken word, though. Time now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the home the day, baby, be No. Like... Charlie. Enter the character. Like, be, be what you want to talk about. Because, frankly, people are tired of listening to stuff that they don't relate with or they can't relate with. Or taking things lightly. Let people feel that Charlie, someone has not even thought about it. That hey, Charlie, where I was there in Kenya, crowd. One friend of mine said, So, Charlie, let the person feel someone has not even thought about it. Say, hey, where I was, Charlie, or oh, you are probably talking about a social issue. And then, as um, Keshela was saying, get your facts. So, you have your facts. Jack Hill has some pieces like that. Even Preston, dear Mike Brown, most of them are case studies. So Mike Brown, Jackie too was talking about, I've forgotten the title, Genetics to the Hippo Christian, and then Photoshop and those kind of things. When they come, even Chris Webb, sometimes they produce statistics. So the poetry starts, I think I've done that just once, when I was talking about uh, twice, Osama Bin Laden and the Twin Towers, I had to research what date, um, September 11, the World Trade Center, Twin Towers, and all that, like deep research. So the poetry started with statistics. So on September 9th, when the whole world was watching, going about his activities, this, 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 Osama Bin Laden, so... It is a narrative, but you're making it poetic. So, like she said, a uh, poetic narrative in order to get your facts. Someone is in the audience. The person, all the person knows is 9-11. Plane crash B happened. The person doesn't really know what is happening. So with that, you have presented information to the person, kind of, because your research and everything that you are talking about is on point. And then you have... The person gets a visual picture of what you are painting. You are probably talking about Black Lives Matter. And then you come and stand there. You know. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives. Black Lives. (laughs) Why do they matter? No. (laughs) You want the people to feel like what is happening to someone that a police has probably... I think Chauvin has placed his knee on the neck and the person is saying, I can't breathe. And maybe your poetry starts with, I can't breathe. You can really write a nice piece and present it and spoil it. So maybe you start with, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe three times. And then you continue. So you come, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. But someone else comes, light everything on point. The person starts, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Like, all of a sudden, you're like, you feel you're also choking. You're like, 
am I talking to? Okay, because of the way the person is presenting it. Okay, so let the people visualize what you, whatever you are going to say. Okay, so that is visualization. Amen. And then set moves as cues for easy transition between verses. There is a beautiful poem by Abel. And then, well, it's not so sharp, but we can see that it has been segmented into verses. When I read this poem, I was thinking about the blacks that were being killed and hanged at a point in time around the south. So, is a song? Is a song? Wow. Please give it up for Sheila. <laughs> the southern trees bear strange fruit. That is the beginning. And then it's, in, it, it's ending with strange fruit hanging from the Is it poplar? Yes, poplar trees. And then the next verse begins with pastoral scene of the Galen South or Galen South. So we are setting a mood for the first one. You are talking about strange fruit. You probably, there is something that the Shakespeareans used during their time. If they are talking about um, maybe to be or not to be, then they picture two bees. Like only making bees, bees so, and then um, when they think about the bees, they're able to remember that they were going to speak about to be or not to be. So is it the bee? <laughs> you are like, how does bees have correlation with to be or not to be? And then maybe there is a window. So to be, to be or not to be, at the outskirts of town, looking through the window. So the person has pictured two bees playing around maybe someone's window or something. So you are setting the mood for this. The first one is talking about hanging strange fruit. So you probably think about a fruit you don't really like. For me, it's mango. I don't eat mango. When I see someone eating mango, it's a, it's a slimy. It's a, that, yeah, the mango lover is always no trip. Open your mango no way. But what you chop salo. Now I wish now we don't eat mango. Then uh, okay, but me, I don't take mango. <laughs> so you think about strange fruits. So you think about mango. So every time you're going to start your poetry, like, I don't like mangoes. Mango is a strange fruit. So you remember strange fruit. When it's ending pastoral scene of the gallant out. So you know that the next verse, I'm taking it to church. Right from the strange fruit, or right from the mango that I don't like. I am going to church. What is in church? Priest, pastor, pastoral scene from the Galan South. So those are some um, ancient ways that people created moves to help them in memorizing. Okay. And I recite a piece looking in the mirror. This is something that I do almost every time. When I have a ministration and I'm memorizing, Charlie, I'll go and stand before the mirror. Only me. I said... <laughs> That's my bottom. <laughs> They'll be standing before the mirror. And then I'll be speaking to the mirror. I think um, last year, somebody last year, I was still at um, this place, KG Hostel. And then during the COVID season, when the, we were all on lockdown, lots of people left um, the hostel. And I think I was memorizing something. So I was standing before the mirror, before I realized... <laughs> My door. Ah, is everything all right? It's, oh, <laughs> everything is fine. <laughs> because when I'm, when, I, when I'm done memorizing, I'm speaking it out. I want to behave like I will on stage so that I don't lose anything. I don't do, oh, you do a home home, but no. <laughs> so I want to do like that. So if you are in the next room or something, you might be hearing, God! And you're like, hey, what's happening? I can't be here now. Nah. <laughs> Just like the nosy black Americans. <laughs> They'll knock at your door, right? So call 911. I think something is happening next door. <laughs> Where are you? Police come. So they ask me, like, oh, everything is fine. So I had to tone down. But um, rehearsing in the mirror, if you're able to look at your own self, eyeball to eyeball in the mirror, and still remember your lines. Charlie, when you stand before anyone, you remember the lines. How many of you can look at yourself in the mirror, eyeball to eyeball, and recite to yourself, when you do that, eh, when you are speaking 
and you even look at me, I can look at you and say, Jesus is love. Actually, there's no peace in my head. <laughs> okay, so do that, and I think it's one of the guidelines to help him memorize and, and then recite the piece to someone. If you've ever been my roommate, you will endure this. You will endure it. My roommate is not here. Like all my roommates are not here. But if anyone has ever been my roommate, I've disturbed the person before with this. No matter how best I know I've memorized the thing and I can say it to myself, I will still find someone. Even if it's even if it's hours to the administration, I'll find someone and make sure the person listens to me and tell me what they think. Raising the cry, maybe people like, the way the cry endures some. If I have administration and he is there, I say, Charlie, Charlie, listen. Yeah, we will say it to him. He has to hear. Charlie, the audience, if even it's one, say it to the person. Amen. So get a friend, whoever is there, make the person listen to you. And don't behave like, oh, it's an audience of one so let me just say it anyway no minister like you will you will do it on stage okay so that is it and then ultimately identify what works best for you from recording to writing your pieces they are not um let me say they are not the rules they are not rules they are guidelines ultimately you are the one who knows what works best for you you know that when I record it, then it sticks better. When I write it, it sticks better. When I say it to someone, it sticks better. So you identify um, what you can actually work with. And then you, you go along with it. Amen. So how many of us have been blessed by this? We are moving to the next one. But before that, any questions before I move to the next one, which is stagecraft? So any questions on memorizing your pieces? Memorizing, memorizing, memorizing. I'm rising. Great. No questions, and let's move to stagecraft. You have a question? My name is Kekeli. Yes. All right. So my first um, poem I wrote, um, it was quite long, but because I didn't, um, because I didn't know about mem about the necessity of memorizing, I just wrote it on a paper and I ministered it to the audience. Is that um, another way of, of ministering the poem or is not the correct form? Okay, so if you heard Kekeli write, that's nice. <laughs> if you had a Kelly right, he said his first poem was a lengthy one. He didn't memorize it. He read it out. And he, he wants to know if it is wrong. It is not wrong at all to read your poems. You've probably been given a deadline. And, oh, let me say, you are the one who gave yourself the deadline. If you were the arts director in your church or for an organization and you don't study your poem on time, you can decide to read it out. But when we move to the next part, which will be the stagecraft, we are going to learn the importance of preparation. Such that when someone hits you up, Charlie, when and you may only a PCB or I've worried people with that thing a lot. I feel guilty. And then you're like, it is my opportunity. Charlie, I'm I'm on, I'm on. It has its own like effect. But reading your poem is not wrong at all. We actually have um, conferences or meetings where people come and then they read their poems. It's like a poetry reading session or narrative reading session or reading of proses and all that. It is not wrong at all to read your poem. And it doesn't make it less powerful when you read your poem. Say, when I, because I read this poem, it is not powerful anymore or something. That is not it. But what, what we want to achieve right now is um, those of us who would want to come out and speak and have enough connection or enough time to connect with the audience. Suppose I come to you and I, I'm reading something from here and then I read a bit and I do this, I read a bit and I do this. And then I come and whatever I, I want to say is in my head. 
and I am moving through the aisle, it makes my connection um, tighter than when I am reading from the paper. So it is not wrong to read, but memorizing also has its own advantages, amen, that we are all encouraged um, to do, to memorize, so that we can also reap the advantages of memorization, amen. Because that's probably most of the things that spoken word artists would do. So you go to a slam, and probably there is not even enough light on stage to see what you have there. Amen. So how are you going to read from the paper? So when you start reading and you be able to read well, please graduate. This is not a, you, a sleeping pill that, oh, and I say, me, and I say, me, true, you my business, I'm ready. Please, I beg, graduate <laughs> and start memorizing. Amen. Is there any other question on memorization? Please, someone has a question. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, Your name? Frank. Frank. Yes, please. Uh, Frank Guy. Okay, um, with the memorization, um, okay, the guidelines you gave us, you like understand the content. Um, yes break your poem into pieces and um, i mean yeah um but sometimes you no know, you see when you do all these guidelines um you said it several times to yourself so it's like your mind has recorded it this way after this line i move with this line so that is how your mind has captured it but when you go to the stage you know who said one must be at the second line or fifth line so once you miss the fifth line you know, the mind cannot move to the next line because i say you can't see that one until you, know, you are stuck and then with that even when you try to put in lines you realize say hey, as you are putting lines no then you are forgetting more <laughs> even more <laughs> yes uh, because i've had a, a, um, an experience where i said me do f i didn't even reach the middle and then that was the first time um i had like a very big flaw with that so I got to the fourth line, and I immediately, I didn't even want to think because I didn't want the audience to realize that. So I moved, tried to put in words. Yes, and then I realized, hey, I, f I couldn't <laughs> remember anything. Uh, okay. So with that, no, I don't know. So this, this um, is taking us in between stagecraft and then uh, memorizing. Because this thing they're talking about happened on stage. So should something like that happen on stage, what, what should you do? Or is that a question? Yes. If I'm right, is that a question? Is, is, should something like that happen on stage? Maybe you've memorized the thing, but you miss lines and you are putting lines in it and it's not working. What should you do? Okay, that's one part. That's one part. Okay. Another part is how should you memorize it such that you won't be able to, I, I mean, that thing won't happen to you. I don't know. I didn't find it okay. as part of the Okay, so please, you will find it in, find what works best for you. <laughs> because <laughs> I can't really show you how you memorize such that you won't forget a word. Because we have different um, mind abilities. Okay, we have different abilities. So I can't show you how to memorize such that full stop cry. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like when you forget. When you forget, what should you do? Like, I don't know how to put it. But if someone else gets him, the person can help us all. Okay, if you get where he's coming from. Okay. Like, I think what he's trying to say that on stage, when you forget your lines, what can you do to, like, recall? What can you do to recall? Yes, those lines. I believe the point six or seven, where you were 
um, you were trying to show us the cues or something. Certain moves. Yes. Certain moves for the cues. I think that one will clarify if we could go back to it again. Okay. So, um, Keshela helped out here. So, she's saying that, uh -huh, what Frank is saying is that, how do you memorize such that when you miss one, everything doesn't become jammed up in your mind? Okay, so, that was where, um, please, the name is, Randolph was talking about setting moods for the cues. You know that your first verse or first stanza is talking about love. When you move to the next stanza, you are talking about hatred. Okay, so when you are, you are done memorizing and then you are probably um, delivering your lines, you forgot a line in love. But because you have set cues, you know where the love stanza ends. And you know that when it ends, the next thing you are picking up is you are going to talk about hate or hatred. Okay, so whatever ad lips, that is, things that are not part of the poem, but you have added them to it because you've probably forgotten your lines. Whatever ad lips you are putting in there, it should end at um, where love ends. I don't know if you get me. Says that when you begin hatred, it will be a new chapter for you. A new verse altogether. I don't know if you get me. So when, when um, you study them together, without segmenting them, when you miss one line, you are not remembering the rest. But this thing has really helped me a lot. When I break my poems, when I forget a line here, I already know that it was part of the first stanza. So when I, and I can begin the second stanza and flow through it all, because continuing from there, I can remember. But when I study all of them together, when I miss one or one delays, everything else goes away. But when you study them in stanzas, you are able to recollect. When even you miss one line in the first stanza, you can continue from the second stanza and it will still make complete sense continue to the third, fourth, and you wouldn't really be found wanting. But when you clamp them together and study them, when one goes away, everything becomes messed up. I know if this, this helps. Mabel. Sure. So with the forgetfulness, I mm -hmm. think you can also see the poem as some sort of story narration. Mm. So as uh, um, Felix said, the first stanza is talking about how you went to the market. Yes. The second stanza is talking about the food stuff you bought. Yes. The third one is talking about how you came back to board a car. So let's say you had the food stuff you bought. Maybe you've arranged them, pineapple, uh, yam, this. And let's say you forget pineapple is the second on the list. Obviously, it's still food stuff. So you can bring in uh, coconut or probably tomato. You get it? Because you know that you are still talking about food stuff. So if you see it as some sort of um, story, to, I remember I was doing a duet with the way and then I got to a part where I was like, my beloved is like the dove of the blah, 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 the apple of the tree. And I missed the line. And I was like, please, I'm talking about my beloved. So I just thought of something. His voice is sweet. I mean, you just, <laughs> so you just bring, like, because that part, you are describing him, his features, his physical features. So I hope you are following. So you, you can just, see it as some sort of storytelling. And another thing that I, a trick I use sometimes is that when I don't have time to memorize, you can be creative um, in the way that, let's say you have two pages to minister and you've memorized only one. What did you do? It has happened to me so many times. <laughs> so that one, one time I, I typed the second page on a paper. I got to the stage, I recited the first one all right. And because of the nature of my ministration, I ministered to them that, so this, what I'm holding here, is a letter from Jesus. And he has given me permission to read it to them. <laughs> and so, so I read it. I read it to them in a poetic way. You get it? So you have to be, I saw the spices, kakra. Yo, yo, it's, it doesn't have to be like chin, chin, chin. You are going this way. You always create something. Sometimes to, let's say you've memorized 
uh, the second part, but not the first part. You can start from the back. You sit down. You read the first part. Then you get up. Then it's like you're coming from the back with the remaining. <laughs> like, I hope you're getting it. So you always have to create something. Create something. Then the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. Please clap for her. Clap for her. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think I'll add up to the creative. Sure. Yeah, like she said, if you can't memorize, just be creative. There's one of my pieces. I made it like a core conversation. To me, I'm a friend at home. Then my friend, my record it. So I was, I did the one that I can remember. Then the call came in. Then I picked my phone. Hello. Uh, then the other one was reciting. I've, I've recorded that <laughs> on a phone call. So you hear the phone ringing inside. And it was, yeah. So just be creative if you can't. Also, find other ways to deliver. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, another trick that uh, my new rappers use is they, uh, they have like static lines that can mm. go on any beat. And that's what they use as like more or less their sailor, like in the sound. It's like they are pause. So if you are talking about love, maybe you have some two static lines that can fit in any poem. So Jesus is love, like something. So when you forget and you really can't remember, you just say those static um, poem lines and then you move on to your other um, chapters or whatever. Wow, beautiful submissions. Please give it up for all of them. Give it up for all of them, all of them. <laughs> These are wonderful tricks. I remember when I was in Kath, I did something like that. I was doing poetry, jelly, nothing. So when I came, uh, I read, I said one or two lines. The next thing, so this is an epistle from, what, 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 to the church of God at Confandoche. And I started reading. Why? <laughs> because there was no time to memorize on that day. And then I went to a wedding. So I was doing a wedding poetry. And then I forgot what I had to say. But there was this particular poem I had been doing almost at every wedding. And when you insert it at anywhere in any poem, so tell me where if you are that poem, me this is our poem name. Then uh, you are going. So you can use those um, kind of things too. Amen. So quickly, let's move to stagecraft. Hey, our time. <laughs> the Lord is my abandoned. <laughs> Amen. Oh. So, so stagecraft. What is stagecraft? What, what, okay, what do we think about stagecraft? Stagecraft, stagecraft. When we say stagecraft, what are we talking about? I want someone to talk, talk, talk. I want to talk. You don't want to talk. I want you to talk. <laughs> like how you act on stage. How you act on stage. So stagecraft, he says how you act on stage. You are. Hamon says how you act on stage. Sorry. What's the Madro? <laughs> um, the techniques we use on stage. Techniques you use on stage. Have you given them a power now? They are shocked, so. This one they is a will. <laughs> stagecraft. What do you say stagecraft says? Um, your delivery method. Delivery method. Charlie, people are shocked. Please clap for them all. Okay, so. Stagecraft quickly is a technical aspect of the performance. So after the writing and everything, um, this is after the prayers and everything. Amen. The technical things that you should know when you get on stage. And then it includes sound, light, costume, makeup, presentation, and props. I'm going to break them down. Let's go. So... For presentation, we have vocal presentation and then body language. Let's go through vocal presentation. So there is something that I've said numerous times. So today I won't... Okay, this is a different audience. So let me still spend some time <laughs> scoring the poem. Uh, how many of us know uh, musicians or have studied music a bit or have belonged to a choir before? If you belong to a choir before, please give me a wave. Okay, a few of us. So there is something in music that is scoring a song. That is where the music directors meet and then they do, maybe Otto will be doing this. Keshala is a very, very good musician, so I know <laughs> she can sing very well. I you know Altos will be doing this, tenor will be doing this, sopranos will be doing this. So they'll be starting from do, re, mi, do, end here, and all that kind of things. So in poetry, this was something I learned and has really held my delivery. There's something we call scoring a poem. And these are the things that you go through to score the poem. You are um, creating voice moves for your poem. That at every point in time, this is how I am going to deliver the lines. Amen. 
first of all, we look at um, staccato. Staccato is something we use in music. It's also something you can use in poetry. As a matter of fact, all the things you're going to talk about, you can use them in music. So staccato is you are speaking and then you are trying to break every syllable. You are probably using an um, iambic meter, like Keshela was talking about. But you are breaking every syllable. Rappers do that a lot. Because supposing I'm doing... Um, I want something to read. I'm doing poetry and... Let me see if I can get something here. Something here, something here. Um, okay, so, yes, I, ha I have this spoken word piece that talks about the transfiguration and then the trinity and all that. And then it gets to a part where I say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That part alone, I break it into, I use this technique, staccato. I go like, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You see, you have broken them down. I could have said, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It's something that young book read artists everywhere, they do a lot. Like, ah, today, ah, I want to let you know that, yeah, that kind of thing. So it's staccato. You are breaking them down. Yeah. The worthy and Mabel. Yeah. You know, when God spoke to me, he was like, ah, ah, that kind of thing. You don't take care. All you'll be hearing is, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and then there is legato. Legato will be the opposite of staccato. So sometimes you are singing in, in music, you are singing and then you are combining everything together. It's something that, like a flow. It's something that you can also do in poetry. Whatever you are saying, it is flowing. And it's also something that young artists do a lot. Chale, also, in general, on person will break you. And no one heard nothing. <laughs> so, so whatever technique that we are learning here, we, we should um, learn to meter them and use them appropriately. So legato is doing the thing flowing. You're probably doing... Um, Give me a song. Uh, give me a simple song. My beloved is the most beautiful among, and Eddie among thousands and and thousands. Okay, so you are doing my beloved is the most beautiful, and you don't break. Someone else will do. My beloved is. The most beautiful among, but someone probably doing legato. You do. My beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands, and like the person doesn't want to end or even breathe. So or yet to us is just flowing. That is legato, and there is crescendo. Crescendo is you are speaking and it is rising, as in. Is going up. And this is an element you can use to enrich your poem. So you probably say, and your poem be on a ostatia, just say, you will be a channel in show or stage or something. So, um, okay. A cue that I could probably take something from here. So you are probably doing this and you go like, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Bible says when Jesus ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. The essence of our existence is connected to the ultimate purpose of God in Ephesians 4.13. So we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God is on the move of restoring the world back to himself. God is still in the salvation business, convicting men of sin unto righteousness. And he won't stop until the knowledge of the glory of the Lord takes over the earth.
as the water covers the sea. Surprisingly, it's sad to see a broken world. Apparently, the world is full of hatred, wickedness, and perversion. Many have turned. Yeah. So you see, it is rising, but it is not like a sharp rise when you started now. But unto everyone is giving grace according to the measure of the gifts of Christ. Bible says when Jesus. I know I say, uh, you know, technique, you know. So you are rising steadily, that kind of thing. So that is crescendo for you. And most of the times it makes your poetry very beautiful when you are able to use these elements. Imagine you start and then you are calm and then you keep rising. You are rising and then you get to your part. You use, you are like, like a sing song something. You say some two lines together but still audibly, and then you move to staccato in between. Like it, it gives a visual representation. People will be like, oh. I said, now what can do? Everyone will be, they'll be looking at you. Uh, but when you are saying the thing and it's flat from start to finish, when you get to the middle, hey, my grandma will be sending me a message. Then they will, they will start looking on their phones. The next one, the question is just the opposite of, um, crescendo. So you probably start very high, like the I can't breathe example. You come in, I can't breathe! I can't breathe! He plays his leg all much. Oh my eye. Come I can't show that. <laughs> he plays his leg all man. Push him in down. Till I couldn't breathe no more. So it is coming down. So something like diminuendo or something is also um, decrescendo. And then variations, intonations, this is very, very important. Charlie, you can't stand and minister one minute, poem, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, and the tone you are using is the same from start to finish. Ah, dang. Charlie, vary. Add some variations. When you use some of these elements, they um, automatically add variations to your voice. So you are reading, even some 23, you're reading some 23 in church. Let them see some variations in what you are saying. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He leaves me beside the still waters for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Are you doing a, a friend saying children's day recitation? No. Let them see that there has been a change. You come. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. <laughs> he restores my soul. Okay, there is variation in your voice, texture, tonation. I know that oh, there, you are saying the thing straight, straight. As a one can't tell me a Stop. Then, no, don't don't do that. Okay, let there be variations. Let's move quickly to body language. Hey, the time. How much time do I have? Twenty minutes. Two. <laughs> A lot is my shepherd, but I still need to be in time. So that means I should be summing up. Yes. So quickly, body language, hand. Okay, body language. Do some hand movements when you are doing your presentation. Pace. Okay, if you are not using the standing mic and you are probably having a lapel or something of the sort, tell you, utilize the stage. The stage is for you. And then make eye contact. If you have really memorized your thing, eye contact shouldn't be a problem for you. And it shouldn't make you forget whatever you are saying. And when you are using body language, to use facial constructions. Like when I was reading Psalm 23, I chuckled like... <laughs> It's not every day that we get preach you will deceive your sound from start to finish. Sometimes chuckle, grin, a bit. You are talking, my love. <laughs> my love. I love you. No. You add some E to it, my love. <laughs> then you grin, you chuckle. I can't live without you. And yeah, you step, step, sir. And then it's cold sometimes. <sighs> that kind of thing. And then sometimes be indifferent. Maybe you start your poem. And you want to show how people can be indifferent to vices going on around them. Maybe you are in church. This thing happened, this thing happened. And no one cared. I didn't care either. Because that is the norm. You are indifferent. No, you are not angry. You are not sad. It, it is what it is. That is indifference. And then anger, sorrow, bitterness, depending on the poem. And then performance tips. Find your voice. Please, it's very important. I'll, 
about a minute. After learning everything that you have to learn from other people, after watching videos from Ezekiel, from Preston, from whoever, actually find your voice. Ezekiel is probably ministering to people in America. And then he comes and he, he mounts stage and then he's like, you want to know what? The? And then you are in Ghana. And then you are from make a circle praise be. You don't even go to harvest or you. Praise the method is Pentecost. Also, they are not even giving you the chance to do poetry. Baby, you want to know that you won't communicate. So, after learning everything, find your own voice and use the praise be voice. Amen. Why? It's, it's, it will help you and it will help you communicate. Let them say, so they want to bro. I have a, a client of my mom. He's Lebanese. And I'm the one who speaks with him. Tell his English is Feliz. You come, okay, 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 send truck, right now, right now. So when I'm in the car, anyway, I don't mind. It is business, it's the money we want. When I go, Feliz, yes, 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 Mr. Nazi, you come, me, I come, I'm in car, I'll come. That is how I will speak. Let the one who is, who is sitting there think I don't speak good English. Charlie, when I lose the money, I can't go to him and tell him, send me his car. So find your voice, amen, and then... Identify your audience. Like I said, you are speaking to Presbyterians or Methodists or you are speaking to elderly people. Keshela said that. Like the people who have gathered here, most of us are young people. So we can maybe speak a bit faster and all that. You, you won't come and um, stand before old people and then all you are doing is legato. You are flowing through the thing. No, but sometimes you meet some young people it's maybe at a poetry slump and then you, you want to speak a bit faster, a bit. It also helps communicate some vital things. Then they are like, woo, they are appreciating you. It's because of your audience. So identify your audience. And then on the stage, if you have watched Hamilton, eh, this king, most of the times when he comes to the stage, it is him alone. But what he will do on the stage, eh, you won't feel bored watching him. So I am doing a presentation. And then when I came, I came to chalk like this. And I stood here. And I talked down uh, in this position. You will feel tired. Your mind will feel tired because you feel like you are transfixed to a point. Your mind is transfixed. You are not moving. Okay. And then be audible. Just like you are in the shower. They can hear themselves. They'll be doing all the screaming. <laughs> Most of us have won Grammys in the shower. But when we come out... now. Can someone be here? The person holding the microphone, like my church, Charlie. Oh, your microphone. Oh, no, quite mic now. Nah, nah. Mute. So you are speaking like this. What do you think about it? I see. It's on, it's on. Charlie, when you come on stage, be like, be vocal, be audible. I have an experience with the word. I ministered with him in Sunyane. And then, Charlie, the microphones were not popping, Papa. We had to, Charlie, scream. We were on stage. We moved down, came to stand here like that. We were three people. And we were projecting so that everyone could hear. Because when you baby and I'll be dry, you get a proper mic. So if you do yourself like, mm, maybe I'm shy. So when I come, th that is how I speak. Hello. Let me just... That might be how you see, but learn to project a bit so that people can hear you from afar. And then costume. People take this for granted when they are going to do poetry ministrations. We are like, oh, that's a poetry there. Just get any casual way and then you are done. Charlie, if you really want to bring out the artistic part of poetry, you, you consider your costume. What comes into your mind? I say, hey, na Roman sister na jai, eh, she, she ni hilo, jinaso. Yasao Bonata, hey, you know, romance is the idea, and some kids told. So it gives a hey, now romance is tower, they say, idea and all because everyone would want to watch you. Okay, so let's take in our various spaces, in our churches, wherever that we are, let's take poetry to the next level, such that we are even particular about their costume. If the person is going to talk about being in slavery or something, you can get a good costume, slavery costume or something for the person. You don't overcome about slavery. Now that day, the person wore a tuxedo to church. And the person uses a tuxedo to come and stand there. I am a slave. I'm a <laughs> it doesn't wash. Or the person was coming to church. You know, I was shut down. Or bar was down the high hill. So, no, but 
You can't believe it. I was a slave. Like, I'm a slave. No, no, it doesn't work that way. Get some costume, makeup, hair. It helps to communicate the message. Fast, fast, fast. And then sound. Please, this one, you'll just read through it. Identify the tone of your poem. No, what I'm saying, is it a dirge? Is it a tribute? Is it a eulogy? What is it? Is it a narrative? What sound will best accompany it? And then you rehearse with a sound and then you time yourself. Let's move on. And then lastly, be you. After everything that I've said, after everything, Charlie, everyone is unique in their own way. Don't go and look at someone. I heard someone singing some time back. Be maybe say Madame for say ah ah. And yet, and the supoku ne tsunyu mi. Debi o almost in the baby. On the net to send a pepe pepe. I can't hear you. I'm so unyeshi. Wait till me see you. When you raise your voice, everyone thinks it's the person. Please don't live in anyone else's identity. Whatever you are getting from here, whatever Keshela said, whatever you are listening to, watching, it should um, prepare you to be the best version of you. You don't go stand somewhere and you are speaking. People have not seen you. I want to say, is it Ezekiel Azungu speaking? Yeah, but I heard not. I feel it's called management. Ah, okay. I say Ezekiel. No, the base of everyone that you are getting in you, it should make you you. In Jesus' name, I, I have finished. Amen. <laughs> Felix, don't okay, go. okay. My, my last, okay. Uh, there is all. So, liberation is the key to being original. That's what I, I have already explained. So, be liberated and be original. God bless you all. <laughs>